If you enjoy my work, please subscribe and like. Also, check out my Patreon for early access, patron bonuses, and stay sparkly. Street Fair, Book 2 of the Fair Folk Chronicles, written by Jeffrey Cook and Catherine Perkins, narrated by Fairy Princess Lolly. Chapter 3, Green Pills. Megan came home to find her mother staring at a piece of paper, a report card. Is it in? Megan said. Awesome. Sheila O'Reilly blinked at her arrival. Maybe we should get you tutoring, her mother said, staring somehow distantly at the paper. It was Megan's turn to blink. Mom, it's summer, and I already have tutoring. It's called Lanny. Is everything okay with your medication? Yes, I've been taking it just right. Of course, the just right amount of ADHD medication was, admittedly, different than the amount her mother had convinced herself Megan should be taking, which had left Megan's life in a haze until Lanny had forced a secret readjustment. Yet another thing in her life her mother didn't know. Her mother gestured with the report card. B in math, B minus in chemistry. All right! Megan had almost been worried for a minute there by her mother's concerned, blinking reaction. B in this case stands for bow before me, O oh synthetic division. I thought you were doing well. I did do well. I finally managed to get synthetic division to work at all. And look, GPA is the best I've ever had. Megan pointed as she stepped beside her mother. This was an accomplishment. This was great. And despite knowing better, Megan couldn't help looking at her mother, waiting for the realization that she could be happy. It never came. Yes, Sheila O'Reilly sighed. If one factors in... Her mother almost had to take a breath to say it. Music appreciation and art. Yep. I got my plus back in art. Having briefly lost it during her over-medicated phase had been embarrassing. And if you were just planning on art school, there'd be nothing to worry about. Art school was, indeed, one of the things Megan was planning. But every time she tried to mention it, but every time she tried to mention it, there was this strange, brittle look in her mother's eyes. Somewhere between confusion, concern, and pain. Still, not bad, right? No, her mother said. Not bad. I'm sure there's something we can do, though. You know I want to help. I know. Megan certainly knew. Aside from professional concerns, helping was the only thing her mother managed any interest in doing. Work okay? Work is fine. Megan managed to deflect some more questions regarding her grades, scholarships, and summer tutors, partly by helping noisily with dinner preparations. She was proud of her report card after the struggles she'd had, and especially with trying to learn magic from Ashling on the side all the while. Her mother stopped fretting enough to get food served and to take out the bottle of green pills to take with the meal. Megan wondered, as she had many times in the past months, how well those worked for people whose conditions had nothing to do with being fey-touched. Better, probably. They ate quietly for a little bit, before Megan's thoughts wandered back to the fair and to Cash's band. The satirist had cheerfully announced that sax and violins would be playing her neighborhood's event of the season. That took Megan to considering some of the CDs in her mother's box of keepsakes in her closet. Hey, Mom. When I was a baby, or before I was born, Megan tried to keep her deeper breath unnoticeable. Did you ever play the Fremont Solstice Fair? And there it was, that bright, brittle look in her mother's eyes at having to wrap her mind around acknowledging the fact of her former music career. Yeah, Sheila O'Reilly said quietly. I did stuff like that then. And the edge of fear in the look got a little bit stronger. 
You said those voice lessons were just so you could join the school choir. Yeah, they were, Megan said quickly. I was just curious, Mom. I promise. Her mother breathed. Why were you curious? I was thinking of going to the fair with the Kahales, just to watch and eat food and hang with Lani. The whole family's going. Well, except Mr. K. He's out of town again for work. Out of this facet of reality, technically. But as far as Megan's mother knew, Lani's father was human. Of course, as far as Megan's mother knew, Megan's father had been human. If Mrs. Kahale takes you, that's reasonable, Sheila O'Reilly agreed as she looked at her watch and picked up the computer bag by her chair to take out her laptop. It's 7.30, she said simply, and Megan needed no other explanation. Wednesday evenings at 7.30, her mother took an hour to clear out her spam folder after carefully checking any work-based emails. Plenty of the live music events that Sheila helped administrate but never attended, had near last minute changes or questions, making Wednesdays and Thursdays busy days. Once the dishes were cleaned, Megan headed back towards her room, but then detoured. Knowing that her mother would be occupied for some time, Megan quietly headed for her mother's room and the box of keepsakes hidden there. It was precisely as Megan had left it last time, which was exactly how she'd found it originally. As far as she'd been able to tell from the dust on it, it had gone untouched on the high closet shelf for over a decade, along with the old base. That, much as she longed to, she couldn't touch, for fear her mother might notice it was disturbed. But the box, Megan was pretty sure, was practically forgotten. She shifted the carefully folded tour t-shirts aside and started going through the CDs. Fourth one down, after looking through the songs, she found what she was looking for. One of the compilation albums included two songs recorded live at the Fremont Solstice Fair. She was just starting to put things back the way she found them, aside from the borrowed CD, when a voice startled her enough to drop the CDs she was holding. Amateur. Not even wearing gloves. Ashling, shh. You shush, said the tiny amber fairy figure on the carpet, torn butterfly wings dangling from her shoulders. Your mom can't even hear me. I'm like the wind, and possibly some other 80s power ballads. Did you walk all the way down the hallway? More discreet than writing, the pixie said. Waiting would have been even more discreet. You'd be more discreet with me showing you how to sneak stuff. Megan quickly shuffled the CDs back into place and put the shirts back, then returned the box, trying to get out of the room in case her exclamation drew any attention from the kitchen, while Ashling continued mixing tips on breaking and entering with old song lyrics. Megan did hold on tight to the single CD as she headed straight for her room with it after making sure the hall was clear. Ashling's crow companion, the Count, was waiting patiently for them on the bust of Athena Megan had been given, crafted in fairy for just this purpose. Lani had helpfully made a shelf for her next to the bedroom door. Her mother had questioned it, but mostly let it go the way she did many minor issues that Megan could reasonably describe as an art thing. What are you doing here? Did my dad send you? Yeah. Did you hear about the market? Yeah, Megan said, fidgeting with the CD. Lonnie told me. But did she tell you about the animate piggy banks? No. She mentioned moving paintings, though. That might be nice. Megan stopped suddenly as she was putting the CD in the player. Wait, why would I want an animate piggy bank? Who doesn't like getting bacon for their loose change? And the paintings? They're nothing. Wait till you see the lamp exchange. 
Megan struggled slightly to regain a grasp of the conversation. So, Dad? Oh, yeah. He wants to ask you something. In person. So let's go tomorrow, okay? Okay, Megan said as she put the headphones on, listening to the voice that was so much younger, but recognizably her mother's. Why is it Monday, and how am I hungover from your laugh? Why is it Monday, and where did we get a balloon giraffe? The crowd went wild as her parents rocked out when no one understood that something was burning away.